nanti kalian Nizar, salam rakam. Sar, orang kan ada dia. Nalar kan, nalar kan. Nizar, kelas mana berdiri kelas? Oh, ini kan? Kelas, tujuh puluh lima, enam puluh lima sahaja kelas. Enam puluh lima, ada, ada, ada. Ambil orang. Aksi enam puluh lima, okay, sir, okay, sir, okay. Siapa pasal mana dalam ni lainnya berapa orang kan? Ini siapa pasal mana orang le? अभी जो कोर्स पढ़ेंगे अब तो हम वो प्रश्न बना देंगे ना
Yeah, I've done that. Can you hear me now? You are able to see the screen. Uh, Karthik, uh, Mr. Tangam, you are able to see the screen also? That's what I did. That's what I did. Yeah, so now your entire screen is pressed. Then share. You able to see the screen now? Oh my God, when you did. When you did No, no, I saw, I did the, I did the exercise earlier itself, I did this. Earlier they were able to see the same screen. That's what I do. You're able to see the screen? Now you got it? You got my first slide? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, once again, a very warm welcome to all of you who have joined the uh, Ramco Institute of Technologies webinar series. So at the very outset, uh, we in Indian Green Building Council would like to thank Ramco Institute of Technology for the wonderful opportunity and the total support extended to us, especially to the professors, uh, Dr. Kannan, Karthik Prabhu, Mr. Tangam, and the entire team has put me uh, to this. Ho hope my voice is also audible to each one of you. Very good. Thank thanks for taking So the agenda for the next 45 minutes is let us discuss what is a green building, what are the challenges, and how we in IGBC have converted all the challenges to opportunities. Then 2025 innovative emerging technologies, which you'll all love it. That is a of my presentation and followed up by how we in all of us who are listening to us today can join IGBC in this green building movement. So this is a broad agenda for the next 45 minutes. So we would love to start with the challenges. When we started this movement in 2000-2001, uh, we engaged a lot of stakeholders like you and the challenges typically are uh, many, but I would like to highlight the what are the top five challenges we faced and we are facing till even today also. So the number one challenge is whenever we say any incremental opportunity or anything new we wanted to do, many of us we feel uh, India's population is more than 1.3 billion people. Uh, population growth is the biggest challenge. This is what you hear typically. The second challenge, many of the cities and now the towns and the villages as the summer has approached, in the past we used to have plenty of water everywhere. Now the present scenario, what you are seeing on the right hand side, many of us are not having an access to the drinking potable water itself. So this is a second challenge, challenge most of us we face in India. Third is on waste. Every city or a town in India earlier it used to be a very clean. If you see the hundred years ago. Our own uh, societies are much cleaner, much greener. But the present scenario, I'm equally patriotic. See from my uh, the perspectives, what are the challenges we are facing? Present day, for example, a city like Bangalore itself generates more than 3.5, 3,500 3, tons of waste per day. So the waste handling is the biggest challenge in most of the cities and towns. Fourth challenge is tra transportation. So we closely work with Bangalore. That's the reason I'm taking example of Bangalore. Bangalore city alone has 13,000 kilometers of road length. But many of us in car, we travel at 10 kilometers per hour speed, actually. So that is a speed of a bicycle. So we are traveling in a car at a bicycle speed. And on an average, a city citizen 
spends almost more than 240 plus hours stuck only in traffic jam in a year. So transportation is another biggest challenge we face. Fifth one is on air quality. So earlier, 100 years or 150 years ago, the ambient air was more cleaner, more greener. The CO2, SOX and NOx levels are not so present at all or it is very minimal within the norms. Whereas if you see on the right hand side, this is even the man has covered his nose even before the COVID-19 uh, has occurred. So in order to protect himself from the polluted air, from the polluted air. So here again, these are the top five challenges the Indian uh, green building sector or construction sector or a common man faces. And some of the other challenges as far as the building industry is concerned is there is a substantial change in the lifestyle. So our lifestyles have changed uh, dramatically. The comfort levels, when you compare with 50 years or 60 years ago, what it was and now, it is much different. And the affordability also. Uh, earlier, if you see, we have to wait for wait to get a scooter. Uh, registering 40 years, 50 years ago, that's what my father also did. To get a scooter, you have to wait for months together, years together. Whereas now, the affordability for a home or an office or any appliance has become much easier. So all these are putting a lot of demand on the resources. So we need more than a planet Earth, one or two planet Earth's demand, uh, resources to meet our ever growing demand. And already some of the resources are very finite and it is a fragile ecosystem. So our growing, ever growing demand puts it all the more, all the more tough for all the resources to sustain. So these are the few challenges. We wanted to convert these into opportunities. So that is the reason we in CII, CII is a Confederation of Indian Industry. It's an Apex Industry Association. Incidentally, this year, CII is celebrating 125 years of our service. So we started in year 1895, I repeat, 1895. 125 years ago, the Confederation of Indian Industry has been formed in order to serve the citizen and the country alike. So in 2000, whatever the challenges we saw earlier, as well as the building sector was about to grow in leaps and bounds. So the Indian Green Building Council has been formed by CII. So this council and uh, we are all permanent employees of CII. And before we started the service, our chairman, Mr. Godrej, mentioned that our own center in Hyderabad, what you see, the CII Godrej Green Business Center, which is the headquarters of IGBC, has to be designed as per the world's best standards on energy, environment, and climate change. So this is how this uh, modern 21st century green building movement in India started with our own Hyderabad headquarters building, which has been designed between year 2000 to 2001 and constructed on 13th of November 2003. This building has been awarded as the world's greenest building. So the world's greenest building title has been awarded to our own IGBC headquarters building in Hyderabad in India. All of you who are listening to this presentation. You and your colleagues and your institution, all the members are invited to IGBC. Whenever you visit Hyderabad after the lockdown or whenever you are visiting, you are most welcome to visit our center. The center has been inaugurated by then President His Excellency Dr. Late APG Abdul Kalam on 14th of July 2004. So IGBC headquarters, which is the world's greenest building in year 2003, has been inaugurated by him. So we closely work with government, both at the state level and the central level. If you see the vision of the Indian Green Building Council, the vision of the Indian Green Building Council is to enable sustainable built environment for all. So that is the reason we have chosen a topic. What is the true potential of a green building? So in the process, we want India to become one of the global leaders in sustainable built environment by 2025. So this is the overall vision of CII's Indian Green Building Council, which is popularly known as IGBC. So we are also a founding member of World Green Building Council since 2004. 70 countries, right from Australia, Japan, Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, India, Middle East, Europe, and Americas, and all the countries, they have their own Green Building Council, 
which are all members of world green building council so why i am saying this is we have a wider reach and igbc is the only council recognized by world green building council from india so all the activities what we do in india is represented in the world forum through indian green building council so we have a wider reach all the institutions or the students and the faculty members who are listening to us so if you require any support in getting the technical know how or what the other green building councils are doing across the country you are most welcome to contact us so though our building has been designed and awarded with the world's greenest building in year 2003 we are not rested on our own past laurels we have made many changes in the last 13 to 14 years very recently we have changed all the air conditioning systems the led systems and the most interesting stuff is what you see the aerial view of our own building we have put a bifacial solar pv the solar pvs are on the both the sides of the both the sides of a very light white glass which is very unique so 140 kilowatt worth of solar pv which is the first of its kind in the india which has been mounted all over the roof as well as it has been put on the vertical faces of the building in some portions which generates all the energy it requires for our building to be operational one what we have done is we have enhanced the energy efficiency to the highest order so that our energy demand is the lowest having achieved the lowest ever energy demand required the entire energy demand is met by the solar pvs mounted on the roof and the vertical solar pvs so this has become a net zero energy building theoretically we don't even require a electricity power connection from the grid but due to various operational concerns we do still carry have a electrical connection with our grid so as far as a green that is a brief about our own igbc headquarters building in hyderabad so green buildings are not new to india india has a rich culture heritage and our history dates back to on a, even on a conservative side dates back to 6000 7000 years old history especially i am a very big fan of places of worship if you walk into a temple or a church or a mosque or a gurudwara which has been constructed some of the buildings some of the places of worship you will be able to recognize they have been constructed in the 8th and the 10th century they will stand tall forever and they are very comfortable when you walk in even in the middle of the afternoon like a peak summer in the may or june month so what you are trying to tell us india has a rich heritage knowledge and wisdom when it comes to green buildings also so green buildings are not new to india at all so how do we define a green building as far as igbc is concerned this is how our definition goes we engage all the stakeholders involved in the construction industry like architects engineers consultants academicians manufacturers and the common man to define it so as far as igbc is concerned a green building is the one number one which conserves natural resources number two uses less water during construction as well as during occupancy number three green building is the one which optimizes energy efficiency number four green building is the one which generates less waste during construction phase as well as during the occupancy phase last but not the least the fifth one is a green building is the one which provides much more healthier spaces for every every occupant as well as provides a more healthier space for every living being on the planet here so this is how green building is defined as far as igbc is concerned so put it in a nutshell green building as far as igbc is concerned is a holistic and integrated approach so like what we have five fingers in our palm the green building approach of igbc encourages number one the site related concerns how do we address it number two is on water efficiency number three is on energy efficiency number four is on materials number 5 is on indoor air quality so that is how we are approaching a green building design construction and operation in a very holistic and very integrated way so as i said site water energy materials and indoor air quality the five elements are not new to india so when we started our journey in year 2000 so this is like a rediscovery of our own indian ethos which are all again 8000 9000 years old so the five elements of nature what we call it as the panchabhutas in vernacular language spiritually also 
we pray to all these five elements of nature every single day. So the earth, water, Agni, the fire, Vayu, the air, Akash, the sky. So whatever I said earlier, the sight, water, energy, materials, and indoor air quality is completely aligned with our ancient wisdom of five elements of nature. So that is the reason we say in IGBC, green buildings are not new to India. So having said that, with the support of all the stakeholders, what it started as a one small project in year 2001, what you see on my left-hand side of the slide, 2000 square feet building, IGBC headquarters building, with the support of all the stakeholders like you, today we in India have more than 5,800 plus projects right from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, from Kohima to Kutch on the other side, cutting across all the five climatic zones of India, and 7 billion square feet of space is adopting IGBC's rating program. I repeat, 7 billion square feet of green building spaces, as you are talking today, is adopting IGBC's green rating programs. So 7 billion square feet from India is a very, very monumental and a milestone. So amongst all the 70 green building councils across the world, India stands number two. So we in India should feel proud. And we are pleased to mention that the entire credit goes to all the Indian construction industry stakeholders, like developers, architects, interior consultants, manufacturers, every, every construction workforce and the common man involved in this movement for the last 20, 21 years. So having seen what is green and what is IGBC, let us move on to the next in our agenda. What is the IGBC green rating program and why we need a rating program? Since we, we, we only said that India has a rich culture of 7,000 years old, we know the know-how, we have the wisdom, ancient knowledge, then why do we need a rating program? Many of us may be wondering. But we need a rating program because, number one, it defines what is a green building. Otherwise, somebody may say that if I paint my wall of my office or institution with a green color paint, can I call my building as a green building? Or if I use a green tinted glass in my glass building, can I call my building as a green building? So though we love the color green, a green building should go beyond a color of a paint or a color of a glass. So that is the reason we need a rating program which defines what exactly we mean by a green building, number one. Number two, a green building rating program galvanizes the entire design construction and the entire entire team right from the principal architect to the consultants to the manufacturers and the contractors as well as the workforce involved in a building project so they should all know what we are trying to do in a particular building project so they should all be shown what is the requirement as far as the building typology is concerned what i as an architect i should do i as a developer what should i do I as a material supplier, I should do what kind of a material I should supply to this particular A project or a B project. So that is a, there is also a need for a green building rating program. Third one is a green building rating program recognizes the achievement of a green design, construction and operation team involved in enhancing the performance of the building with respect to energy, water, materials. So there is also another need for a rating program in the process. By having a rating program, the entire green building market is being transformed. So we'll see what do you mean by a market transformation which has happened in the last 20 years. So this slide says why we need a rating program. So we in Indian Green Building Council, ever since we started in year 2001, we believe that every building typology is an animal species by itself. An office building is different from a data center. A metro station is different from an institution. A campus is different from an affordable housing project. The affordable housing project is different from a healthcare facility. So that is the reason we are the only council in the whole world to have 26 different IGBC green rating systems. So that the places where we live, learn, work, play, travel, and worship all can go green by adopting our IGBC's 26 green rating systems, which has been developed with the 
support of all the stakeholders as well as by engaging various government agencies both at the central and the state level and nodal agencies like national building code energy conservation building codes and the moef all these codes have been codes and the ministries and their team of these uh, these uh, committees are involved while developing the rating program itself so we in icbc also closely work with various government agencies also for example when we started developing the rating program for metro rails which is the world's first metro rail rating program has come from us we end, uh, we are mo we have signed an mo with delhi metro rail corporation and when we started developing a rating program for railway stations we signed an mou with the ministry of railways and the railway chairman board railway chairman as well as the members of railway boards are actively involved right from the day one of developing the rating programs so what we do is we closely associate with various uh, central governments as well as agencies and moe partners like developers associations like kradai indian institute of architects indian institute of interior designers and others so this has been holistically developed by involving all the stakeholders involved in the building sector so we have a rich experience of handling homes factories offices townships places of travel like airport metro stations and villages and cities so we have as i'm talking to you more than 2000 plus projects are operational across the five climatic zones across the country so let us come to the main element of my presentation how we in igbc collectively we are able to address all those five challenges what you see in the earlier part of my presentation how we converted those challenges to a great opportunity by incorporating innovative futuristic and emerging technologies in the igbc certified green buildings so the next 20 minutes i literally run through some of the measures which has been implemented because the time given by our ramco institute of technology is only one hour so literally i'll run through it for any queries you can come back to me during the question answer or later on also as far as the site is concerned we always encourage all the architects and designers and builders to protect all the flora and fauna present in a greenfield site so we have to cons uh, we have to conceive and design a building project which is in harmony with the environment which is in harmony with the nature so that's why we call it as a green buildings are built around the environment as you are able to see it in a, this uh, slide our own igbc headquarters building we have preserved all the rocks and we have retained the topography of the site as it is given so there is a reason you are able to see these rocks these rocks are million years old they are much older than our own languages what we are speaking today actually so we are able to preserve and conserve the rocks which are all million years old so as it is so the buildings are designed in a such a way that they are all built in harmony with the nature so we also wanted to protect the entire the top soil the flora and the fauna so in a given commercial site in the places like mumbai bangalore hyderabad or even in a tier 2 or a tier 3 cities it is not possible to protect all the top soil which takes 500 600 years to get that nutritious value so what we do is we strip the entire top soil to the few inches stack it up preserve it once the building construction is over we plow it back there are hundreds of technologies available in order to protect the erosion erosion of soil during the construction phase as well as during the operation phase by the wind or by the rain water so these are the few examples you are able to see some of the measures we have done there are 100 measures available whatever is applicable for erosion control or sedimentation control by having a swale swale is nothing but a kind of a trench done in a eco friendly way using the entire earth and the contours sedimentation traps sedimentation basins or silt fencing which can become a part of your landscape later on so these are the few measures which are very popular and done in many of the igbc certified projects across the country to preserve the entire micro organisms present in a 500 600 year old rich soil and enhance the biodiversity so we in igbc always believe in buildings are not designed and constructed and operated only for human beings buildings are built designed for further enhancing and promoting habitat and enhance the biodiversity 
so that is the reason we in igbc encourage to preserve the existing trees if you have any or if you don't have anything it is a barren land plant more trees and saplings which are native and adapted to our climatic conditions and soil conditions so that we enhance our green cover which in turn enhances our biodiversity the next element is on heat island effect so we are uh, just in the middle of the peak summer many of us are facing the brunt of the peak summer yesterday's hyderabad temperature was as high as 43 degree centigrade so in a peak summer the temperature goes up like anything but at the same time if i go 100 kilometers away from hyderabad in a village which doesn't have much development the temperatures are much lower in the middle of the afternoon so that is what we call it as a heat island effect so the difference in temperature on the same time when it measured in a well developed city and when compared with a, a village or in the suburbs or in the countryside where the development is not that great so mainly because of we in cities we bring in lot of concrete we put in lot of black top for to cover our roads so we bring in more and more concrete and we need more car parks we need more roads tang in cheek and i can always say road uh, buildings are nowadays the cities are designed for more for the cars rather than the people itself so there is a reason that could be one of the reasons for rise in temperature or having a higher heat island effect how do we mitigate it so there are n number of design and construction techniques available in order to mitigate the heat island effect so how do i bring down the microclimate temperature when compared when compared with the conventional cities so the, some of the measures very popularly done are having a shaded pathways going in for a beautiful trees which has a beautiful canopy so that they cover the pathways be the roads or the whatever the bokeh beautifully so that they are not exposed to the sunlight or not exposed to the ambient sun amb ambient the ambient uh, sunlight in a harsh way going in for a cool pavements which can be painted or have a beautiful uh, high sri coated material have a vegetation so these are the few measures we do it that is with respect to the non roof as far as the roof is concerned how do we treat the roof the final finish of the roof is very important as far as the heat island effect is concerned so normally people go for earlier people used to go for a china mosaic the broken china mosaics are all laid out on the roof which has a very high emissivity and reflectivity nowadays people are going in for a beautiful painting materials are popularly known as high albedo painting materials which has a very high reflectivity and very high emissivity are painted on the topmost roof surface so which will not allow the heat to come into my building through the roof third is a combination people can have a green roof on the roof as well as going in for a high sri paints also so all the three options are available so based on the utility of the roof surface based on the functionality of the building roof surface you can have all the three or the combinations of three as well so still if you don't believe us this is a thermography of a roof surface which has a green roof as well as a well grown tree on the topmost roof surface of a building in mumbai if you see the thermography closely wherever you have a greenery the temperatures are much lower the red color spots one hello kanan the red color spots are the one what you see which is having a concrete surface which absorbs enormous amount of heat during the day time then they re radiate the heat after uh, say 2 o'clock in the afternoon so that is the reason we would love to have more and more green roof or if green roof is not possible due to the various operational concerns you can go for a high sri coated paint surface which will reduce the heat ingress through the roof even in um, big cities we don't get many surfaces to have a landscape at the ground level so the only option available is going in for vertical greenery all along the walls both on the exterior as well as interiors now this is becoming a big trend actually so these uh, walls next to our indoors or exto exterior uh, vertical walls are now we discussed as a living walls which are able to mitigate the heat island effect at the same time they are able to attract lot of bees butterflies and bring down the microclimate to much cooler 
uh, bring down the temperatures and make give us a much cooler uh, space around us so sustainable transportation is also addressed in the site related issues very aggressively i presume that uh, many of you are from the academic uh, or the institutional background here it is all the more important because your campus has run into few acres few hundred acres so how the entire blocks are all interconnected by having a well designed interconnected pedestrian network so that i don't take my bike or a car when i'm moving from hostel to admin block or academic blocks so adequate illumination uh, to have this pedestrian network so that people are encouraged to use these pedestrian walks they walk a lot within the campus can be encouraged or in a big uh, government projects and campuses can be done this is also encouraged as a part of our sustainable transportation then we do encourage this all clicked in various institutions across the country we all encourage the usage of bicycle within the campuses by providing an exclusive bicycle lane so that they are all given a priority they can all have a comfortable ride or within the campus when somebody is moving out we also provide access to the external transportation by having a beautiful shuttle to the nearest bus stops metro stations mmts whatever the public transportation services are available from our campus or from our office area how you can get connect so that we wanted to eliminate the usage of diesel or cng or petrol based fossil fuel based uh, vehicle to the lowest ever possible second is on water efficiency at a macro level we have seen it at site level so how we address the you saw that water is the biggest challenge we saw it in the initial slides how do we address it so the popular 3r approach we all know how do we reduce recharge reuse to enhance the water efficiency igbc has introduced the fourth r what we call it as a refuse some of the water fixtures they don't need water at all so they refuse to have water or they no, don't need water to uh, during the operational phase that's why we call it as a refuse so god's gift is a rain water yesterday also we had a beautiful uh, showers intense showers in uh, hyderabad so every droplet of water igbc recommends to collect whatever falls within our site by having a beautiful ponds water bodies storage tanks wherever it is possible wherever it is not possible due to the operational concerns or the non availability of spaces we encourage people to go for the recharge pits through the percolation pits or the using the old bore wells or the existing bore wells so is a classical example of another 300 acre campus here in hyderabad courtesy to isb indian school of business so they have designed a very integrated rainwater harvesting system by adopting our igbc green rating program and they have a capacity of multiple rainwater harvesting pits followed up by multiple small big pond so they are able to capture 100% of a one day rainfall can be captured within the site not even a single droplet of water will not overflow during a rainy season so it has been done beautifully these are the live examples you are able to see the multiple rainwater harvesting pits even if there is a overflow the pits are all interconnected and they are all connected to the smaller pond they are all in turn connected to the larger pond so that the water from the rainwater is collected to the last droplet harvested and it is not let out of the site there are n number of classical examples available across igbc certified projects second is on landscape design we closely work with indian society of landscaping architect popularly known as isola all the landscape uh, architects involved in isola has given lot of inputs to us so we in igbc the igbc rating program encourages usage of native because i cannot take a plant from chennai and place it in hyderabad because chennai and hyderabad climatic conditions are completely different hyderabad is not closer to sea or a river so it is less humid whereas chennai is right on the sea coast it is humid the soil conditions are different so whatever is suitable to the native to that particular location we should put it we encourage more and more native and naturalized plants or lawns as to be mounted planted in the igbc related projects they should be adaptive and drought tolerant species and having planted a naturalized species how do we irrigate them so the sprinkler and drip irrigation we eliminate we wanted to eliminate the usage of open ended hose if i give a open ended hose imagine i am a gardener in your site in your office 
or a project campus if you give me a open ended host with the due respect to the gardener i will drop it in one place after half an hour i come and pick it up your open ended host and put it on the other side so instead of planting the water i over water the entire sphere uh, entire entire species may die sometimes the plants and saplings may die because of my over watering or i may take away the entire top soil also so there is a reason we encourage a lot of usage of these uh, systems they are all not so costly they are all available in plenty next is very important element we closely work with the uniform plumbing code and other uh, agencies in bringing down the water consumption by going in for low flow and ultra low flow fixtures whenever you are going to buy a new tap please ensure if my video is available please check it out what i am showing is in the video is a small aerator which looks like a bottle cap this is only going to cost us only 15 rupees 15 the moment i put this aerator in my tap the tip of the tap this will reduce the water flow without compromising on my comfort levels so 15 to 40% of the water flow can be regulated by using a such a small aerator which is small in size but it has a very big impact on the water consumption so when you're talking about uh, wcs western class said going for a dual flushes nowadays people are talking about 2 liters and 4 liters for the flushing system and wherever possible go for a waterless urinals so this is our own igbc headquarters wherein we installed the india's first waterless urinal in year 2003 still it is operational last 18 years we have not faced any problem whatsoever is concerned so there is no plumbing line on top of this fixture and it doesn't require any water at all so that is where the fourth r comes in it refuses uh, the water requirement having said about the water fixtures how do we treat the waste water generated so there are n number of ways of going for a mechanical treatment which uses a lot of chemical which uses a lot of power to treat the gray water whereas here the black and the gray water generated in our own office in igbc headquarters we treat it by natural process what we call it as a phyto remediation so what you see is a part of the landscape it looks like a landscape but there is a sewage treatment plant operational below below so this entire gray water is treated through the plant and it becomes a clear water and it meets the pollution control board norms on the ph value biological oxygen demand bod cod whatever whatever you call it it meets all the demand it has been done in many projects all you need is you need a quite a good amount of space to install this phyto remediation which is nothing but a natural way of treating the black and the gray water generated in our buildings this has been done very beautifully in one of the chennai house small house which they done it very beautifully next is on the water metering so what is being measured only can be managed what is being measured very well only can be managed very well so we encourage our rating program encourages to install water flow meters in a very strategic locations like the borewell inlet where it is given to a cooling towers landscaping or if you are talking about a, a campus hostels are the one which consume enormous amount of water where how do we connect it so this is being beautifully done in many of the apartments in bangalore you see that these are all the water flow meters it uh, symbolically looks like our uh, when you go to a petrol pump there is a uh, there is a meter actually correct that is how it has been mounted on the entrance of the washrooms in these apartments so before you enter the washroom you know by seeing the meter imagine it reads 100 after using the washroom the morning for taking a shower after you say you come out if the meter shows 200 i consumed 100 liters to take a shower so by putting this meters right at the strategic locations people are able to bring in more awareness and bring in the change within so that they should consume less water in their house or an office or a campus or wherever it is possible so there is what the measuring can do wonders next is on energy i'll slightly run through fast orientation of a building is very important especially when you are coming up with a new building please give lot of importance to orientation because uh, you can change the lamp you can change the air conditioning unit after the building is done but orientation you cannot change it so this is a, this has to be given enormous amount of importance next is on going for high performance wall the wall the roof so that india being a tropical country we use air conditioning mostly for cooling except for places northwards of delhi they may use it for heating during the winter months but typically south of delhi southwards of delhi throughout the country 
we use air conditioners only for cooling purpose so we would love to have a high performance envelopes both at the wall as well as the roof which doesn't bring the heat excess heat into our systems there are n number of options available if you are a civil engineer you would love to have enormous amount of options for with respect to the wall the glass the roof the roof insulation materials enormous amount of options are available now the building designs are becoming contemporary also they have started using the light weight fabrics in order to provide a shading devices so that the glass the windows uh, the doors are beautifully shaded based on the sun path analysis based on the sun movement the doors and windows can be protected in a such a way that it brings in light but not brings in excessive heat into our air conditioned space through this effective usage of shading devices next is our igbc rating program encourages passive architecture elements as well as other contemporary passive cooling systems also for example earth air tunnel geothermal cooling the wind towers or passive down drop evaporative cooling system where the wall becomes a part of your cooling system you will see some of the live examples here the earth tunnels are buried at say a few meters uh, below the ground they are buried a huge fume pipe the entire air is drawn through that and they are filtered by having a filters on the other side so that we don't get the insects or other unwanted polluted stuff before letting into the spaces these are all very effective in places like pune bangalore dehradun and the radiant cooling before pouring a concrete the red color pipes are all buried along with the steel rods before pouring the concrete on the roof slab the roof becomes a cool chilled beam by carrying the chilled water so the roof above our head can become a part of the air conditioning system the floor below our foot in the space is acting like a underground flooring the entire ducts are all on the underground there is a geothermal cooling system so your roof can act like a air conditioning system your floor can act like a air conditioning system the wall can become a part of your air conditioning system so lighting so when a gas can travel in pipe light why not sunlight so there is a question as they came out with very innovative uh, pipe which we call it as a sun pipe which has a highly reflective material on the inside of a pipe by having a polycarbonate sheet on the top which brings in only the light after multiple reflections they are able to bring the light deep inside our house this is a small house in hyderabad where you are able to see the in the picture it looks like a artificial light glowing correct on the right bottom whereas it is not a artificial light these are all the light natural light brought down by the sun pipes so energy efficient equipment is being encouraged when you buy an air conditioner or a pumping system centralized chiller system motors all of them should be the energy efficient system and how do we control especially the campuses you have a huge uh, Uh, what do you call lighting systems for the outdoor lighting it can be controlled very beautifully and having brought down the energy demand to the lowest ever possible we do go looking for renewable energy sources the building integrated solar pv the micro wind turbines or in the entire parapet walls in many of the institutions and many of the houses they are able to have a combination of a micro solar pv by a micro wind turbine you see it in our indian flag a tricolor it is that it has a small micro wind turbine as well as a small smaller pv on top of it so they can generate enough energy to have our entire lighting load on our individual house right on the combination of these two so energy metering similar to the water metering we do encourage energy metering fourth is on materials the waste management as we said one of the biggest challenge in many of the cities is how do we manage the waste so that is being addressed in a very holistic way having collected the waste segregated there are n number of natural processes available to treat the waste generated like the vermi composting leaf composter or wherever it is not possible we can go for a mechanical processing and in some of the classical examples the segregated waste is able to generate enormous amount of bioglass especially if you have a huge canteen or a hostel facilities in your campuses the bioglass can come back to our own canteens and then they can replace enormous amount of our lpg cylinders and how do we handle the waste during construction that is also encouraged during a construction phase we can segregate the waste in a much better way select a eco friendly material how will i know it is eco friendly material here for example a railway sleeper is being used the old railway sleepers which are all 150 years as a envelope on the envelope in a new building 
they not stopped it there the fine wood which comes as a container after a container and a container which carries the materials they are all dumped earlier and as a waste whereas the waste fine container are uh, small cotton boxes which are made out of pine woods they are all converted as a modular furniture in a multinational office in india can you believe it and they are all converted as a false ceiling tile also so there is nothing called waste in the indian philosophy so what i consider as a waste becomes a food or a resource for somebody else so that's what we call it as a waste becomes a resource we encourage usage of recycled material whenever you buy any cement please check it out the recycled content whenever you buy a block steel furnitures they all have a recycled content for example the pencil which i am holding it this is a made out of a plastic which is made out of cd the old cds they are all processed so that we don't cut the trees from the forest earlier the pencils were all made out of only wood so this is a, when a small consumer item like a pencil can go green why not a civil or a construction or a uh, our uh, civil building construction material that is the reason we have launched a service called green pro next time whenever you buy any civil construction material like a paint steel cement concrete please look for this logo green pro certified logo it has a framework there are more than 1000 products in india are certified by igbc's green pro so these products are eco friendly they are manufactured in a very efficient way the way in which they source the material the supply chain they how they transport from the finished product how it reaches all of them have been taken care and if you are a material manufacturer you can export this products because it is a green pro certified there is a huge demand across the world we also encourage pre engineered and pre fabricated technologies for example this particular house in a bangalore police quarters headquarters it has been constructed for a police employees they have constructed this house for two police uh, police officers in 17 days can you believe it two houses in 17 days 18th day they had the house warming session and the beauty is they not even generated 1 mg of waste in the construction process all it is all pre engineered fabricated at site so fifth one is on indoor environmental quality now nowadays we are spending most of our time indoors especially for the last two months we are all spending our house in indoors so what the, the health and well being of us is decided by the what kind of uh, air quality i inhale the quality of air which i inhale is going to decide my quality of my life so next is on the materials what we use the kind of a paint the carpets the adhesives and sealants third is the connectivity of my house or an office to the external world so these are the top three parameters which ensures a better indoor environmental quality so we do encourage the naturally ventilated spaces wherever their occupancy is big for example a classrooms in our classrooms in our uh, institutions we put 60 70 people in a, in a classroom so there are obviously many times we may go for air conditioners or seminar halls or uh, our call centers so whenever you go for a mechanical uh, air conditioning systems are there you go in for a treated fresh air unit which brings an enormous amount of fresh air to every employee so there is being encouraged so not only we encourage uh, energy and energy friendly environment friendly products we encourage igbc encourages people friendly products like paints carpets and composted wood as i said please look in for a green pro certified products which are all people friendly so for example whenever we paint a house when we use a conventional paint next day you are not walking you, are, you will not be able to walk to the house actually because the conventional paints may have excessive volatile organic compound popularly known as voc voc stands for volatile organic compound present in conventional paints whereas some of the green paints or the green pro certified paints they have an absolute zero voc content because even a measuring device which is zero means is not absolute zero even the measuring device is not able to uh, able to detect the minimum quantity available in the voc level in the paints so this is what we call it is a zero voc paints are available which are all people friendly next is we also encourage to bring in more and more daylights and views so that is being encouraged these are all the igbc certified projects houses what you see on the bottom is a house wherein is completely connected to the external world offices are connected to the water bodies the meeting rooms are happening on a open space which is completely daylight so the daylight 
has a greater impact on a health benefit the vitamin d is deficient in india it is very very ironic the biggest source or the only source for vitamin d is the natural sunlight the sunlight is available in abundance in india for 365 days when my skin is not getting exposed to the sunlight then i am getting into a vitamin d deficiency so by bringing in a daylight and occupants walking all over so we have a great opportunity to have bring in more and more daylights and views these are all done in many institutions these are all done in very beautifully by having a skylight light shelves and the last one we encourage people to be more healthier more happier so we need a health and well being facilities the key word in igbc for the last 3 years is health and well being health well being now hygiene is also getting added with the covid scenario so health hygiene and well being is being encouraged by igbc rating program to bring in these facilities so these are all measurable benefits based on these elements what you saw these features every project is rated at four levels the highest level is platinum rated because you achieved a global leadership level for incorporating many green features what you saw earlier next gold is on the national excellence third is on silver for outstanding performance certified is the best practices you have done so platinum gold silver certified is the certification levels offered by igbc so by adopting our igbc rating program you may be wondering what is that you will get one you will be able to say for example 1 million square feet of office space they are able to reduce 15000 megawatts worth of electrical energy can be saved by going green with igbc water savings to the tune of 40000 kiloliters to 45000 kiloliters can be saved in 1 million square feet of office space which is igbc certified so the water saved and energy saved brings down our water bill and energy bill so that our operational cost of my building green building comes down drastically low and the water saved and energy saved is available for my own countryman so the water saved and energy saved will also reduce my global greenhouse gas emissions or co2 emissions to the tune of 12000 tons per million square feet and we are also able to divert the construction waste reaching the landfill we are able to bring in 700 megawatt of renewable energy sources so igbc green rating programs what you saw from the earlier pres uh, my presentation is very simple in terms of understanding and the approach but it is very demanding in terms of performance from the architects developers engineers consultants and the end users and it has a profound impact on the environment as we are able to see that saves enormous amount of energy it consumes less water brings in enormous amount of value to every participant every occupant in the office so there's a profound impact all the 26 igbc rating programs have become a national by choice and global in performance when you adopt igbc rating program for your office building or a home or a campus you can proudly say that you are having a truly world class institution by adopting our igbc standards we do run a program called igbc green education because of want of time i'll run through it indian green building sector sorry green building sector is growing in leaps and bounds we need more than 100000 trained green building professionals every year so that is the reason we have a unique program for green uh, professionals all the faculty members and students are encouraged especially faculties are encouraged to become an igbc accredited professional popularly known as igbc ap ap stands for accredited professional and for students also we have a, a bigger vision there is a classroom uh, program for 45 hours certification course we run it and we have a train the trainer faculty program is also run by us so there are key benefits for students green igbc will be more than happy to join hands with you all in the green education program so what it began in india 20 years ago by constructing igbc headquarters as the world's greenest building the 21st modern century uh, 21st century modern green building kick started from here with the support of all the stakeholders and it has become a movement by itself when i say movement it has a greater impact on every citizen on the planet of earth so that is the reason it has become a movement it has a bigger benefit for each and every citizen of our country so 7 billion square feet adopting our igbc rating program this has become a big movement by itself and it belongs to each one of you each one of you the students the faculty members academicians the government developers architects engineers designers each one of you belong to this movement 
because of you only we in india were able to showcase 7 billion square feet is possible in less than 17 years so you all bring in innovation inspire people and involve more and more people so the entire indian green building council uh, is very very pleased to have each one of you as a partner and the building sector is going to grow i'm going to conclude in another two three minutes so the building sector is growing in leaves and bones so we are going to add almost 50 billion square feet in the next 20 25 years so there is an enormous amount of growth in the construction sector so we saw already the five challenges water scarcity transportation waste handling energy where is the air conditioning is going to come so there is an enormous amount of challenges correct so that is the reason we have chosen and you saw the last 25 slides what you saw these are all the green building measures and features which are able to harness the potential available so the true potential when we all collectively come together and make every single building both existing and the new buildings which are going to come up as a green building by adopting our igbc green building norm that is a true potential so by harnessing the true potential to harness the all the natural resources the site elements through our igbc rating program the water will be no more seen as a scarcity we will move from scarcity to abundance so as i told you by just by installing a small aerator it's a small piece of an aerator in the tip of the tap will be able to save enormous amount of water imagine every tap in india overnight as an aerator that there won't be any scarcity at all so these are the few measures by doing all this measures collectively we will be talking about availability of water in abundance in india next we said this is a challenge so when you harness the true potential in handling the waste in a much better way the green building through igbc rating program allows all of us to use abundance and endless reuse you saw that railway sleeper getting used as a facade in a building modern building and it can be used again and again using the various technology endless reuse and upcycling is encouraged by igbc rating program so waste handling is no more seen as a challenge so there is a great potential so together we can harness in handling the waste in a much better way for a better man third is on transportation so what you see on the left hand side is the most of the cities across the world when you all start using the individual cars that is how the scenario is going to be so when you have more and more usage of public transport walk to work cycle carpooling or a mixed land use pad designs are coming in so we won't be devastating to travel at 10 kilometers uh, per hour speed in a car in a city like bangalore or delhi or any of the metros which is uh, devastating all the resources on the earth and all the more polluting the air in turn it is uh, deteriorating our health as well as the health of the planet earth itself so by encouraging a uh, using a public transport we will be able to save enormous amount of resources and our mother earth or the nature can heal and recover to its best fourth is on energy and renewable energies by using the energy efficient green building equipment technology and system as a whole in order to bring down the energy demand to the lowest ever possible then topping it up by the entire energy demand is fed by renewable energy so sources will ensure that even if you add another 50 million square feet in the next 40 years the energy demand is going to grow but the energy demand can be met with the least emissions by going green by going green so energy would be available in abundance so that is a kind of a true true potential available for example imagine uh, imagine it, imagine a scenario the entire 250000 megawatt is installed capacity in india of the power plant so the entire energy required on a theoretical side, if I say everything has to come from a solar panel, people may say that there is no space in India. All we need is 5% of the India's land mass, which is almost 3.6 million square feet. 5% of the land mass can generate all the required energy which comes from 250,000 megawatt uh, of a power plant. So renewable energy, the space is not a constraint. It is all the change in our perspectives and the perceptions and the mindset once it changes we can harness to the true potential 
and the urban ecosystem is changing it some of the cities they have gone flat horizontal they have grown and expanded horizontally so that is the reason the traffic jams and the resources and then even the water bodies in some of the cities for example bangalore bangalore had thousands of water bodies 100 years ago now we, many of them we have lost it as per the recent study done by iisc also so the urban ecosystem by growing green with igbc it will become compact and by having a sustainable uh, transportation models we can all become we can harness every every single potential available in order to make it as a much much world a better place to live in so each one of us who are listening to this uh, webinar joining hands with the indian green building council we can collaborate much closer than never before with the lockdown and covid has brought in a lot of challenges we can work more together in order to make greener healthier and happier india so that while harnessing the true potential through adopting our igbc rating program there is an economical benefit for the end user there are profits will go up there is an environmental benefit for everybody the people involved and there is a societal benefit for the people and the planet also so there is a win win situation for economy environment and society at large so by harnessing uh, the potential offered by the green buildings in the buildings and the built environment where in india is witnessing a huge tectonic changes in the way in which the designs are being approached the materials and equipment usage is seeing a sea change the technologies so every one of you who are listening to this uh, webinar can uh, humbly we in igbc humbly request you to become an ambassador to spread the awareness on green buildings and implement the green building elements what you see they are all very simple doable in every practice whatever you do and the time to act is now we don't have any time at all so the time to act to harness the true potential is now you can join hands with igbc so to sum it up ladies and gentlemen as you heard from the igbc's our presentation india offers a huge potential to harness the natural resources finite and infinite resources in a much better way there is a huge tremendous benefits for the society and nation at large and it also instills the citizens and the participants like you when you go greener way with igbc it brings in a sense of pride i have done something unique so that the country can progress in a much better way and it also brings in a sense of contribution towards the society more importantly ultimately whatever you are doing it small or big by joining hands with igbc enhances the quality of life of every living being on the planet earth so our father of the nation mahatma gandhi ji said there is quote and quote he said there is enough resources on the on earth for everybody's need but not for everybody's greed so even adding more buildings to meet our growth we have to grow we have to add more buildings by going green with igbc way we will be able to handle the resources in a much much better way so that is the true potential of green buildings offered through igbc so once again i uh, from the we from the indian green building council thank ramco institute of technology for giving us a wonderful opportunity for more resources you can visit our website igbc.in or you can write to my email id m.anand@ci.in so with this i once again thank you for a patient listening and thank you for your valuable time from 4 to 5 o'clock so over to you kartik prabhu
yeah i will answer the question see co uh, there is not a code what we have done is with a collective effort from all our igbc stakeholders when i say igbc stakeholders are uh, 2000 companies are members of igbc and 100 technical members are available what we have done is we have uh, come out with a uh, what do you call how the operational procedure when you open up an office or a home or a campus what are the guidelines we should follow immediately after the lockdown we can share it it is available in our igbc website also so for example how we encourage the entry way system sanitation measures how we can enhance your interior layout for the social distancing how you should fumigate what are the housekeeping chemicals you should use how you can have a non contact uh, uh, entry way systems or uh, uh, openings of the doors and other elements so there is a very comprehensive guidelines for buildings how it has to be operated the covid uh, post covid uh, guidelines are already prepared by igbc you can write to me or you can visit our website if you finding it difficult to visit our website uh, who's or has you write to my email id i will share it in another 2 minutes yeah we do work closely with various uh, government agencies for example if you are adopting an igbc rating program in uh, uttar pradesh you will get 10, 5% more built up area imagine you are supposed to construct only 1 lakh square feet if you adopt igbc rating program you will be given 1 lakh plus additional 5% space to be constructed number 2 some of the projects when you are having a very big campus like 100 acres you have to go for environmental impact assessment or moe of environment and forest for clearances when you say your igbc certified pre certified project you will be given a faster clearance you will be given a preferential treatment and when you buy a green home from a green developer which is certified by igbc your emi will come down by 25 basis points on your emi instead of paying 12 emi per year you will be uh, paying only 10 emi in a year so there are a lot of financial incentives for the end users as well as for the for the uh, uh, de- not the designers for the uh, developers also yeah see what all you have to do is uh, for igbc ap exam we conduct a two day session actually because what uh, our ramco institute of technology team has given is only one hour actually it is like a t20 match for me i literally ran through the presentation so minimum i need a 50 over match or a five not a five day match so two days of session we are doing it on online last week we did 125 people uh, attended the session so by attending the session you will be told whatever i literally ran through the 25 green building measures we will tell you what is the intent what is the requirement and what are, why we are doing that so once you attend our two day session you will be equipped with all the resources after that you read the resources for a week or a 10 days based on your comfort level then we have the igbc ap exam also available you can take it from wherever you are it's online it is available whether you are operating from your home or office or institution wherever you are from you can take up the exam online so there is a procedure for igbc ap if you have any other concern or any other better way of doing it you please write to me i'll be more than happy to associate with you Wonderful. Thank you, thank you, process participants. Almost more than hundred plus people. I don't know. I never seen the chat box while presenting. Thank you for joining us. I once again thank Ramco Institute of Technology, especially uh, uh, Mr. Tanga, Mr. Uh, Karthik, uh, uh, Prabhu, and uh, Dr. Kannan for uh, inviting me. Thank you for any support. We are all available.
together let us make a greener happier and healthier india thank you have a nice evening stay home stay safe